I now want to teach to you the difference between cis and trans isomers of alkenes. Now, keeping in mind that double bonds cannot rotate as single bonds do, is there a difference between these two molecules? Look at them closely and even pause this and think about it before you go on. Now, you'll note that of course there's a difference. In this particular example, this methyl and this methyl are closer to each other, keeping in mind that this carbon-carbon double bond does not rotate, so these are frozen in place, unlike single bonds which can rotate freely. In this example B, this methyl and this methyl are further away from each other, because one of them is staring at the other on opposite ends of the double bond. Which of these two alkenes do you think is more stable? Yeah. You guessed it, obviously it's going to be alkene B, because the two larger groups, these two methyls, are further away from each other. As it turns out, compound A is called a cis molecule, and compound B is called a trans molecule. In other words, alkenes that have two groups on them like this that are closer to each other on the same side of the double bond are called cis alkenes and ones that are the opposite are called transalkenes. We'll talk more of that momentarily, but first I want you to remember from our last chapter that we also use the terms cis and trans to refer to the directionality of substituents on ringed compounds. So I want to emphasize that you should not confuse cis-trans of alkenes with cis-trans of cyclic compounds. Once again, remember that if we have a ring with two substituents, if the two substituents are going in the same direction, either both up or both down, then they are cis to each other, and it's a cis ring. If they're going in opposite directions, then they're trans to each other. Here are a few examples. Cis-1,2-dichlorocyclohexane, cis-1,3-dichlorocyclopentane, and trans-1,3-dichlorocycloheptane. In contrast with alkenes, if you have two substituents that are on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond, which are pointing in opposing directions, then they are cis to each other. If they're pointing in the same direction, then they're trans. So in this particular example, we would call this cis-2-butene, because these two methyls are on the same side of the double bond as each other. You could also call it cis-but-2-ene. And this molecule would be called trans-2-butene, or transbutene, either way is acceptable, because these two methyls are trans to each other, they're on opposing sides of the double bond. What about this example? Well, you'll note that this just has hydrogens. Hydrogens are not considered substituents, thus you cannot use the designation cis or trans. This example is just simply called 1-butene, or but-1-ene brings us to a lecture question. Name the following alkenes, including cis or trans designation. Let's look at this first one. What in the world would I name it? Well, obviously I'm going to count the carbons in the longest chain in the direction that gives me the smallest number to my alkene. That ends up being right to left. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be a hexene, and if I number going right to left, the double bond starts on carbon two, it's, so it's going to be a two hexene. Is it cis or trans? To determine that, I just draw a dotted line down the middle of the double bond, and I ask myself, are the two hydrogens on the same side of the double bond as each other, or on opposite sides? If they're on the same side, then all of the business stuff is also on the same side, and it is a cis alkene. If they're on opposite sides, then it's a trans alkene. And which turns out to be the case in this particular example? Yeah, you guessed it. This is a cis hexene. And of course, I could point out that it is a 4 comma 5 dimethyl cis 2 hexene. Let's look at this example. In which direction do I number? Well, once again, I'm going to number right to left because that gives me the lowest number where the alkene is, and this is going to end up being a 3 heptene. Is it cis or trans? I draw a dotted line right down the middle of the double bond and ask myself, which sides are the hydrogens on relative to each other? Are they on opposing sides or the same side? These are on opposing sides, thus this is a trans 3-heptene. Now, how do you think we name these? I want you to look at them for a moment and ask yourselves, is this cis or trans? Let's take a closer look by drawing a dashed line down the middle of it. Are the two hydrogens on the same side or opposite sides of each other? Well, in this particular example, there aren't two hydrogens. So can I say this is a cis or a trans molecule? And if I do, 
isn't it kind of confusing because am I talking about the chlorine being trans to this methyl or this methyl here being cis to this methyl? Or the chlorine being cis to the methyl? Am I talking about the two methyls or the chlorine and the methyl? Or the chlorine and the, or the, chlorine and the hydrogen or the car? I hope you can co sort of see this gets kind of confusing. Similarly, looking at this example, if I use the designation cis or trans, what am I talking about? Am I talking about this bromine being cis to the methyl? Or this ethyl being trans to the methyl? Or this methyl being cis to the bromine? Or the bromine being trans to the hydrogen? Or what in the world am I talking about? Well, I hope you can see that using cis and trans to name alkenes only works if you have one hydrogen on each of the two alkene carbons. Now if you don't, if in other words you have other substituents, then you have to use a different convention which is called the easy naming convention. I'll explain that to you now. Here's how it works. You basically draw a dashed line down the middle of your carbon-carbon double bond and then you look to the left of it and decide who is higher priority and you put a check mark next to them. You look to the right of it and decide who is higher priority and you put a check mark next to them. If the two higher priority guys are on opposite sides of each other, as in this case, then it is called an E double bond. If they're on the same side as each other, it's called a Z double bond. Here's an easy way to remember that. Z is on the same side and E are on opposite sides. Once again, if the two highest priority guys are on opposite sides of each other, it is an E alkene. If they're on the same side as each other, then it is a Z alkene. And that's the way it works. Now you might be wondering, what in the world, Mike, do you mean when you say higher priority? Let me show you the rules. To determine a substituent's priority, we have to remember that one higher atomic number equals highest priority. Now, if there is a tie, then you keep going out one atom at a time until you break the tie. Multiple bonded atoms are considered to be like the same number of single bonded atoms. For example, if I've got this thing coming off of an alkene, it's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, we can consider it for the purpose of determining if it's higher or lower priority as being like a carbon that's single bonded to one oxygen and single bonded to another, which is single bonded to a carbon. Here are some other examples. If I had an alkene down here and coming off of it was another alkene as a substituent, this carbon-carbon double bond would be counted for priority purposes as if this pink carbon were single bonded to one carbon in green, single bonded to another carbon in green, which is in turn bonded back to a carbon in pink. If I had this carbon-carbon triple bond coming off of our alkene, it would be as if this carbon were bonded to three separate green carbons and this green carbon were bonded to three separate pink carbons. That is how I would count it for priority purposes. Let's take a look at some examples. In this example I'm asked to determine if this is E or Z. How in the world do I do that? What I do is I draw a dashed line right down the carbon-carbon double bond. And now I'm going to look at the two substituents on the left. I've got a carbon and a carbon. Which one has a higher atomic number, a carbon or a carbon? They're the same so they tie. So now I move out one atom to a hydrogen, and this carbon is bonded to another carbon. Which has a higher atomic number, carbon or hydrogen? Carbon does. So this guy down here is the higher priority substituent on the left side of the alkene. Now on the right side of the alkene, I've got a carbon and a chlorine. Who has a higher atomic number? The chlorine does. So this guy is the higher priority substituent on the right side of the alkene. I've got my higher priority substituent here and my higher priority substituent down here. These two guys are on the same side of the alkene and therefore this is a Z alkene. Let's look at this example. How do I determine who has the highest priority? I draw my dashed line down here and I go out looking at the two substituents on the left side of the dashed line. I've got a hydrogen and a carbon. Who has a higher atomic number? The carbon does. So this methyl group is the higher priority substituent between these two. On the right side of my carbon-carbon double bond, I've got a carbon that's triple bonded to a nitrogen and a carbon that's single bonded to a nitrogen. Who has higher priority? Well, if I keep going out, the tie gets broken out here. This guy's the higher priority. So I've got highest priority guy down here on the left and up here on the right. Are they on the same side or opposite sides of the double bond? 
Well, there are opposite sides. And remember, if you're on opposite or eposite sides of each other, you are an E alkane. So this is indeed an E alkane. How do we name molecules that have both a carbon-carbon double bond in them and an alcohol somewhere else in them? So it turns out molecules that have both alkenes and alcohols in them are called alkenols, or sometimes just called enols. They basically come up with that name by combining the words alcohol and alkene and squishing them together to make one word alkenol, or enol, simply. Now these are named by combining elements of the steps for naming alcohols, which we discussed in our previous chapter, with the steps for naming alkenes that we just covered. Because the alcohol component has higher priority than the alkene component, when we name an alkenol or an enol, we have to number the parent chain that gives the lowest number to the OH, not the double bond. Let's take a look at some examples. How do we name the following enols that we've just taken a look at? Here's how we do it. First of all, we decide which direction I'm going to number in. In this particular example, I'm going to number starting at this carbon right here, going right to left. One, two, three, four, five. Because it has an alkene in it, and it has five carbons in it, this is going to be a pentene. The alcohol is coming off of the pentene at carbon one, thus it is a pentenol. This particular example, my alcohol is coming off of carbon one, and my carbon-carbon double bond begins at carbon two. Therefore, I'm going to call it pent two in one all. Now, putting everything together, you can see that at carbon two, I have a chlorine, and at carbon three, I have a methyl. Therefore, the entire name of this is two chloro, three methyl, pent two in one all. In this particular example, I could number going right to left, one, two, three, four, five, six, or I could number going left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I number going right to left, I get a smaller number for my double bond. However, the double bond is lower in priority than the alcohol, so I need to number going left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six is a hexene, and with the alcohol on it, it's a hexenol. Thus, because this particular carbon-carbon double bond occurs at carbon four, I would call it hex four ene one all. I've got an ethyl coming off of carbon four, so it'd be called in end four ethyl hex four ene one all.